Hi guys, Mark Absalon here. Hope you're having a great and wonderful day wherever you are. And welcome to the first episode of Spare Change. What's Spare Change, you might ask? Well, Spare Change, we're going to talk about coin collecting. Yeah, it sounds like a boring subject, I know, but it's a great and interesting hobby. I mean, it really is. So, in this video, we're actually going to talk about some of the things that you need to know before you go actually put down your hard cash and invest. We're going to talk about some of the coins that are out there that you can collect whether you don't have much money to invest or you actually have quite a lot to invest. We're gonna talk about the grading system because us Americans, we have a crazy weird grading system for coins, but it's actually one of the most perfect systems out there if you ask me. And we're gonna talk about where to purchase your coins and how to avoid scams and ripoffs. Now there are a variety of different coins out there to collect from current coins like the Sacagawea dollar, the state quarter series, which everyone's got someone that's collecting those where they went through all the 50 states and this is the last year for it, to the new presidential dollar section, which is going to go from George Washington all the way up to Bush, I think. That'll be interesting. I don't know if Clinton's going to be on it or not. I'm not too familiar with the new coins, but more interested in the old stuff. To the new Jefferson Nichols that came out recently to some of the really old stuff, like the Morgan Dollars, the Barber Half Dollars, the Benjamin Franklin Halves, the gold coins from 250 pieces, Liberty pieces, $10 gold coins, uh, $20 gold coins. Just There's so much stuff out there that you can possibly collect. It's, it's kind of overwhelming and mind-boggling. But in this series, we're actually going to pick different topics and discuss them a little bit. But that's not what we're going to do in this video, because we're going to talk about some of the things that you need to know before you actually invest in them. There are three essential things you're going to need when you're actually collecting. The first is a loop. 10x power is preferred. The second thing you're going to need are a pair of white gloves that are made of cotton. This is so you can actually pick your coins up and um, not actually damage them in the process. And the third thing is a good eye for detail. The proper way of holding a coin is by holding it on its edges. Never actually touch the surface, whether it's the averse or the reverse. The averse being where the face is and the reverse being where the back is normally where the denomination is written, or on American coins, the eagle is present, or on the state quarters where the state is present. One thing we need to talk about too is storage of your coins. Well, if you do have raw coins, make sure to keep them in an inert flip. That's, uh, when I say inert, that means without the chemical PVC, because PVC can actually damage your coins. And, you, and there are a lot of coins in the 80s that got damaged quite a bit by the flips that had PVC in them. So avoid those type of flips at all costs. Now, where to keep your coins when you're actually not looking at them? There are two places. First, you can keep it in a safety deposit box in a bank, which is a great idea because uh, you won't have any problems with theft. Second off, you can keep them in a safe in your home. Well, if you do keep them in a safe in your home, make sure that safe is bolted down and cemented in so no one can ever cart it off. And another thing you might want to look into is getting insurance for your coins because if someone actually breaks in and steals them, you can have them insured. But most of the time, this requires uh, getting them appraised to have their value because most of the guys that collect coins from one end to the other, you've got some guys that have over $100,000 worth of coins to some guys that just collect some of the, the lower end stuff and just have a nice little collection. So those are my recommendations to you. The Sheldon grading scale is a scale of 1 to 70. 1 being the most poor coin you could possibly get. I mean, it's recognizable as just a coin. To 70, which is perfection. It's like the utopia of coins with absolutely nothing wrong with it. The strike, the luster, everything. No marks, no no uh, bag marks, no hairlines, nothing. It's absolutely perfect. 
Now the reason I'm talking about the Sheldon grading scale and grading coins is because all coins are not considered equal. Now you may have your grandmother or grandfather's like, oh, I've got a silver coin that's worth a ton, and they bring it to you. And it depends on its condition as to how much it's worth because when we classify coins in the Sheldon scale, there's circulated and then there's MS or mint state. Mint state coins are coins that have never been touched by human hands. And then there's a, that's the scale from 60 to 70 on the Sheldon scale. 60 being one that's kind of banged up to 70 being a perfect coin. And below that 60, we've got almost uncirculated all the way down to the number one, which is absolutely a disgusting coin. But like I said, all coins aren't considered equal because of that. And coinage prices depend on the rarity and the, how many were actually melted and how many were minted, etc., etc., etc. Grading can be very subjective at times. And it wasn't until the 1980s when third party grading companies came along. These companies actually would take your coin, have it evaluated by three top tier professionals, and they would come up with a grade for your coin encapsulate it in a case and sonically seal it to protect the coin so that it could be tampered with, removed, another coin put inside the case, etc, etc. Today there are actually three professional slabbing companies that are very legit and do a great job and anytime you actually present a coin in one of those cases everybody takes it for that grade. And those companies are PCGS, NGC, ICG, while there are a few others out there that I know I'm missing right now, uh, there are some that are pretty bad and those are the ones you want to avoid. Now the companies you need to avoid that do grading are called basement slabbers. These are companies that have no standards for their grading at all, period. What these guys do are they rip people off, they scam them, they'll take like an AU58 coin and put it in a slab with their little company's name on it, which makes it look authentic, and they'll call it something like a Mint State 66. Well, why is this a problem? Well, the AU58, which the coin is, may only be worth $30. If you stick it in a, a little slab that says Mint State 66, that coin goes from, from being $30 to $3,000. And you see it and it's like, hey, that's a great deal. He's only wanting $200 for it. Well, guess what, if you buy that coin, you're gonna get ripped off because that guy paid 30 bucks for it, stuck it in a plastic, sold it to you as this third grade slabbing company that no one's ever heard of for 200 bucks. So avoid companies that do not have any standards for grading their coins. There are a lot of people that get ripped off out there from companies that do this. I, I got tons of them in my head. If you want to know a few of them, email me and I'll tell you. But um, avoid them at all costs. You can purchase raw coins, but make sure that you know the dealer very well. You might want to actually purchase raw coins that are uncertified, just as bullion coins with a premium on it, because most of the time, a lot of the BU coins that are sold out there um, are actually AU coins, but they classify them as BU. There's, there's a lot of people that are really crooked in this, so you're really going to kind of guard yourself when you're doing uh, purchases. But once you find someone that you know and trust, stick with them. Well, all of this leads me into actually purchasing coins. This is the part that can be tricky sometimes. If you're purchasing offline, make sure you find a trusted dealer, and this can sometimes be hard. Go to a dealer, a dealership that's actually a coin dealer, and uh, ask them a few questions about them, if they're willing to actually help you out and stuff and kind of lead you on to the different grading skills and how to actually grade a coin, then that's good. You might actually have someone that gives you a good price uh, when you want to purchase coins. If you go into the coin shop and they, they don't want you really to look at it that much and they won't really talk to you about the coins that you're looking to purchase, that might be a dealer you don't want to have any business with because a good coin dealer knows that if he treats you right, you're going to come back and buy from him again. Buying coins online, now this can be tricky and this can be very tricky because you never know what you're going to get because you don't have the coin in your hand to actually look at. 
My recommendation, buy certified coins from the top three groups. Buy them from someone that is actually members of different associations from the ANA to the P, uh, to an, an authorized PCGS dealer uh, to uh, the other good top tier uh, certification companies. Don't buy raw coins unless you know the person. Uh, like I said, I know a few out there that actually do it and they do a good job at the uncertified uh, BU coins that they sell. They might charge a pretty high premium, but you're not going to be disappointed in it. But um, avoid eBay. Why avoid eBay? <sighs> I know of one person in particular on eBay that has probably sold over $750,000 worth of coins that are overgraded by one of these scam certification companies. And uh, the guy's probably paid maybe $50,000 worth for these coins and sold them for that a, a crazy amount. And he just keeps selling them. I mean, he keeps selling them and selling them and selling them. These coins that, uh, that are on there, I know are overgraded by about six to seven points. So the coin that you think you might get for a steal, you're actually getting ripped off. So if the bargain looks too good, it probably is because there are no Santa Clauses in the coin market. Now in this video we've covered a lot. I know I probably missed some stuff because there's just so much in the coin industry to go over. We've talked about uh, some of the coins that you can collect. We've talked about uh, um, coin grading, the Sheldon system. We've talked about buying coins online and offline and some of the things to avoid. Uh, we've talked about certi for the certified coins. We've talked about some of those scam artists out there that uh, like to sell coins that are overgraded. But uh, we covered a lot, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Spare Change. In the next episode, we're actually going to talk about one of the most famously collected coins, the Morgan Dollar. So anyway, guys, you have a great afternoon or evening, and stay tuned for another episode of Spare Change.